In this section, we're going to re uh, review voltage and potential difference. What does the voltage of a 9-volt battery mean, for example? Uh, in an electric field, if we, if we move a charge from one place to another, we have to do work. <clears throat> That's like against gravity. If we move mass again from one place to another, we have to do work against gravity. Similarly, with voltage, we do work against the electric field that exists because of the charges. Uh, the amount of work per coulomb is defined as the voltage. In other words, the voltage, what does it mean, work per coulomb? How, much, how many joules of work I have to do to move one coulomb of charge from here to here? From here to here. So that's the voltage between point A and B. Normally, we talk about the difference in voltage. Now, since the, the amount of work that we have to do is equal to force times distance, and the force is equal to QE. So the amount of work we have to do per coulomb is force times distance divided by coulombs, or QE times distance divided by Q. And you can see that the Qs cancel. So another way of writing this is E times delta X. If we move a charge through an electric field that's constant, electric field that's constant, the amount of work per coulomb we do is equal to the electric field multiplied by the separation of the plates. Therefore, the, the work that we do is equal to the work per coulomb multiplied by the number of coulombs. So as we move charge from point A to B, the amount of work that we do will be the, the, the charge of the coulomb that we move multiplied by the potential difference between point A and B. So this will be the units of coulombs. Uh, a volt is a joule per coulomb. If you multiply joules per coulomb, you get just joules. So let's see how you would use this in a particular problem. So let's say we have a uh, capacitor uh, that there is an electric field between the plates. And therefore, uh, we have to apply a force to move a charge. So if we move a charge from, from one place to another, okay, from here to here, we do work. Of course, the work is going to equal to the force that we have to apply times the distance we have to apply. Or, if we want to calculate the electric field, we can calculate the potential difference as the electric field times delta x. But let's, for the time being, let's just calculate what, the, what delta v is. So delta v will be the work times the distance that we move, in this case, let's be at five micrometers, and potential difference will be that work divided by the charge of the charge that we move. So if we do the calculation, we find out that the potential difference across this is equal to two volts. Two volts is the potential difference across the plates. Uh, if we want to calculate the electric field now, we can do it a number of ways. We just got, we know that the potential difference is two volts. We just did that. Uh, we can now use the fact that uh, the potential difference across the plates is also equal to the electric field divided by the distance between the plates. So we can use that equation to calculate the electric field, or we can just calculated using the fact from its original definition that the electric field is equal to the force on a charge divided by the charge itself. So we know that the force on this particular charge is three newtons and the charge is five, uh, five seven point five microcoulombs. And if you do the division, you will find that the electric field
So electric field can be found either using the fact that it's force per charge, which is three newtons divided by 7.5 times 10 to the minus six microcoulombs, or we can see the electric field is equal to the potential difference across the plates divided by the distance across the plates. We already found the potential difference between two volts is two volts, and the distance across the plate is five microcoulombs. And you you should see that both of those will give you in fact the same answer, a certain number of newtons per coulomb. So that was the case of voltage working in a place where the electric field is constant. How about where the electric field is not constant? Don't forget, as we move a charge across an electric field, we have to do work. We just saw that if the electric field is constant, we saw an example of how to do, to do the work. But what if the electric field is not constant? So if you want to move a charge, let's say, from here and put it over here, how do we calculate the work done by that? Well, <clears throat> We already did one calculation using point charge equation for electric field, and we saw that the potential at certain distance r away from a point charge, like right over here, is given by that equation. So if this charge here in the center is Q1, let's call it. There's rounded circles that represent places where the potential is the same and is given by that particular equation here. So it, it, particular values of r the potential will be the same all along this circle. And all along this circle will be the same, but different from the first circle. So what this equation tells you is the amount of work that I have to do to bring another charge, a different charge, let's say Q2, and place it, and place it at that point R. The amount of work that I have to do from infinity will be just that. So we can call that V1, and therefore the work that I did, and this will be the amount of work that I have to do per coulomb of charge to bring the charge from infinity and place it there. So this particular charge, who's, that, it, that has Q2 uh, coulombs on it, the amount of work we have to do, let's call it W1, is equal to Q2 times V1, where V1 is just... The, the potential due to the charge that's already there. So one more time. Around this charge, the first charge Q1, there is a potential. I bring a charge from far away and place it at this point. The potential is given by that equation, which represents how much work per coulomb do I have to do to bring a charge from far away and put it there, work per coulomb. And therefore, the amount of work that I have to do actually would be Q times V1, uh, the work per coulomb multiplied by the number of coulombs that I'm actually bringing in. Now, once I place the charge here, let's say I want to bring another charge and place it here, uh, somewhere, then let's say I want to place it over here. Then I have to calculate the potential at that point point. Now the potential at that point will be due to both these charges now being here. So I've left to use this equation twice. V1 is still going to be the same as it was, KQ1 over R1. But now we'll have to find the total charge, I will have to add V2, which will be KQ2 over R2. Where R2 is the distance that, you, that these points are away from that charge, R1 and R2. We'll do an example in, in the next problem. Okay, let's say, uh, by the way, this, if you far enough even from a, from a, say, a charged sphere, you can use this. You can consider the charged sphere to be a point charge. So here we have a charged sphere. 
how much potential is there at this point right here that distance away that and that would be at any any point that distance away 10 meters away so the, the amount of potential 10 meters away you, you can find by using this equation let's call that v1 so v1 is equal to k times q1 which is 20 microcoulombs divided by 10 so if we let's say we now bring a charge and put it there so i'm going to bring another charge q2 and put it there the amount of work i just did is going to equal q times this v because this this number is the amount of cool uh, joules per coulomb of work that i have to do so if i bring in one coulomb of charge well that's exactly the amount of work i have to do or this will be q2 times v1 so q2 happens to come out to be one coulomb and v1 is that number there k20 microcoulombs divided by 10. Now say I wanted to bring uh, another charge and put it somewhere here. So let me sort of uh, redraw this picture. We just calculated how much work we would have to do To bring this charge here and put it over here, a distance of ten meters away. And this is the amount of work we would have to do right here. What if I want to bring another charge now? Also from far, and the charge could be positive or negative. Let's say this time it's negative. How much work would I have to do to bring this other charge and place it, say, over here? Uh, I gotta fix this up a bit here. And place it over here. Well, the amount of work before I place it there, I have to calculate the potential at this point. Now, the potential is due to this charge here and also to this charge here. These two distances I have to know R1 and R2. Let's say this is a, a square, so R1 is the same as before, it's 10 meters. And this is 10 meters, so we can calculate what R2 is. But the amount of work we would have to do to bring that second charge there, before we, we can do that, we, can we, we need to calculate the voltage at that point. So let's do that. Voltage at point 2 is equal to all well, the voltage due to this charge the, the charge is it's the origin the original charge it's really calculated it's over here plus the voltage due to the new charge uh this is v1 plus voltage due to the new charge that we just brought in so that's is equal to k 20 microcoulombs over 10 plus well, the voltage of the new charge is going to be k whatever the, uh, the, uh, 
the uh, charge of the new charge will be called Q2, I didn't specify what it is, divided by that distance R2. So R2 you can get from a Pythagorean theorem, and this will be the total voltage at that point. With this number, this number will represent the amount of work that I have to do to bring another charge and place it there. This is the other charge over here. I'm going to call that Q3. It could be negative and put it right over there. So the amount of work I would have to do would be Q3, that new voltage of the new charge, times the V2 that we just calculated up here. 